Hello and welcome to the Lenten Chapel. Uh, my name is Dave Mayle. Uh, Cheryl has invited me to be one of the contributors uh, to this Lenten journey. I uh, am speaking to you from England. I live in the outskirts of Cambridge and uh, I work for the Church of England. I'm Director for Vision and Strategy but have spent most of my life uh, in pioneering roles, both pioneering churches and training people uh, to be pioneers. I've been spending myself the Lenten journey looking at one psalm, Psalm 27, and uh, I want to share some of that with you this morning because I think it's really, really helpful uh, for pioneers as we think about what we're doing, who we are, what God is calling us to, some of those big questions of the Lenten journey. I want to read you a few verses from Psalm 27. I'm not going to read the whole of the psalm, uh, and I would suggest that maybe after you've watched this, uh, you read the psalm, or even stop the video now uh, and read the whole psalm so that you get the context. But uh, let me start with just verses 1 uh, to 3. David writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. And there's a real... A real sense in this psalm of trust amongst troubles or as someone said a confidence amongst confusion <clears throat> at the end of verse 3 David writes yet I will be confident I think for us pioneers this is a really helpful psalm because Fears are, I think, a big part of pioneering. In many ways in pioneering, we are putting our neck on the lines. We are trying something new. We are doing something which, in the end, could fail completely. And so often there is real fears with that. I remember when I planted a church in the north of England called The Net, and we spent quite a long time planning it, and it was all very, very exciting. Thinking of what we could do, what we might do, what might happen, what God might do. But I remember when we actually started it, I had the sense that we'd taken the seeds of the idea, and actually now we'd planted it into the ground. And the danger was, it might not germinate or it might stay very small, or it might grow and then die. And once we'd begun it, to some extent we'd lost control over it. And that sudden realisation, this might not work out the way that I want it to. And I wonder in your pioneering, how much you share some of those feelings. They may be buried deep down inside you. They may not come out very often. But that real sense of fear of this might not go the way I want it to. This might not work. This might fail. I'm putting my neck on the line. And what will people think of me? What will the rest of the team think of me? What will my church, my denomination think of me? But more importantly, how will I come to terms with that? I think that is a very much part of pioneering. It is about being confident amongst the confusion of all those questions. It's about trusting God in the middle of all those possibilities. Some good, but some not so good. And I think Lent is a really good time to just think about those fears, to be honest about them. Those things that I said, often we don't let out very often. 
we we keep submerged because they are too scary but actually bringing them alongside some of those amazing statements of the of the psalmist that that the lord is my light and salvation or i think even greater the lord is my stronghold or the fortress of my life whom shall i dread the psalmist writes that actually god is our refuge god is our fortress god is our stronghold and therefore actually that brings a whole different perspective to our fears i don't think this psalm at all is saying that we shouldn't have fears it's kind of saying how do we respond to those fears and what happens is that david brings alongside them the very nature of god and that's why he talks about confidence in the middle of confusion because his confidence is not in his ability to deal with his fears but actually the god who he is trusting in who he's trusting in in the middle of all the troubles issues problems that he's facing and then let's turn to the end of the psalm i said there's there's lots of other things you could look at in the whole of the psalm but it finishes as this I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And that could be translated as be strong and let your heart be confident. Again, that sense of confidence. And that's, again, about the goodness of the Lord. And actually that call just to wait upon the Lord. We need to make sure that the fear doesn't lead us to doing nothing. But actually, we will have to live with that fear. But we live with it with that sense of a God who is our light, our salvation, our stronghold, our fortress. And above all, that he is a good God. He's not plotting against us. He's not wanting to make it difficult. He's not out to get us. He is a good God. But sometimes in the middle of our confusion, we have to wait. And that can be the hardest bit. We don't get the answers straight away. And Lent is very much a period of waiting. And the call here is to wait for the Lord. To wait for the Lord. And maybe in the fears, the danger is we want to opt out. Whatever that might mean for us today. But the truth is, we need to wait for the Lord. And to take courage, to not be afraid. To have confidence, not in our abilities to solve the issues, to solve the fears, but in the goodness of a God who wants the best for us. At the moment, we may not know what that best is. We may not know what that best looks like. But we can trust in a God who is good, who loves us, cares for us, and wants the best for us. So let's just have a moment of silence where we can bring those fears that are there deep down inside us to God as part of our Lenten journey. And then I'll pray. So let's, let's have a moment of silence.
Heavenly Father, I pray for all of us that in the middle of our confusion, our fears, our troubles, we might know your light, your salvation, your refuge, your goodness. Lord, in this Lenten season, help us to be honest with ourselves and with you about our fears. But help us to begin to understand more and more what it means to wait on you in the middle of those. To know that we can trust you in the middle of our troubles. That we can have confidence in you in the middle of our confusion. And that this Lenten journey we might know your goodness. Your presence. And your peace. Amen.